Hey there, booktube. Noah. Everyone who reads it must converse is my channel. Thank you uh, for coming by. The Buddhist series, I've, I've had these this kind of thing that we're, I'm going to approach tonight on my mind for a while. It's the kind of thing that you need a little bit of backing to understand. So, uh, I think it's just about right time to approach this kind of thing. These are uh, a list of questions, 10 questions, traditionally, that the Buddha was silent on. And we're going to try to uh, hash out why a little bit. So, the story was that there was a monk named Malyankayaputta, Malyankayaputta, something like that. He was continually distracted by uh, metaphysical uh, speculation while in meditation. He was a disciple of the Buddha. You know, these, these monks, all these disciples of the Buddha in the Pali Canon, they all were just, you know, uh, ascetics. They were wandering monks that uh, depended on the lay society for their food and for their, um, you know, just a place to sleep sometimes, things like that. Most of the time they, they stayed in the woods. But of course, you know, in India, they have a huge, long mons monsoon season. And so in those times, you know, you're going to need some shelter. Well, there's all, all kinds of dwelling spaces, gardens, um, things like that, where they would find shelter and uh, hang out those months. So, um, caves, things like that, whatever, whatever, you know. So, uh, this, one, this one disciple, this one monk, was taken to metaphysics, metaphysical speculation. And so he asked the Buddha uh, these questions. And they are in a sutra uh, that, that bears his name. It's, uh, it's the questions of Mal, Malyankaya Putta to the Buddha. And let's get to them. So the first question is, is the universe eternal? The second question is, is the universe not eternal? Is the universe finite or is the universe infinite? So uh, in Buddhism, they, they classify those as four different questions, even though uh, it might seem like two, right? Because if you answer, is it eternal or is it not eternal? If you answer one of those questions, then it negates the other one. So, uh, but that's how it's done. So, is the universe of eternal quality or is it eternal or is the universe uh, not eternal? Is it, um, is there an end? Is there a beginning and an end? So, um, our popular science would lead us to believe, um, that there is a beginning and therefore there is an end and there's a lot of speculation as to, uh, what the end is going to be. But is that the whole story? You know, is there, is there multiple universes? Is there, is the black holes, uh, you know, kind of birthing into other universes kind of things like that? Um, is our universe at the end of its life, if it does collapse back on itself, does it at some point expand again or whatever? All those kind of things. There's no answers to any of that, right? It's all speculation. Um, based on what? Observing? Nah. You know, a little bit. You know, you can observe some things. Uh, based on mathematics? Eh, that's more, that's closer to the point of what it's based on mathematical models and the understanding of forces and things like that. But the Buddha is not concerned with that, that, that level primarily, right? He's giving a spiritual understanding of reality and the entire creation and the entire universe is, is enveloped in that. So his, uh, his answer is, is to not answer. Right To all these questions, uh, the answer from the Buddha is to not answer. Is the universe eternal? Is the universe not eternal? Is the universe finite? Is the universe infinite? Um, there is no answer that the Buddha gives because there is no true 
and findable existent universe separate from consciousness. All right. Now, our quantum mechanics would agree with that. There's no uh, separate reality that is existing that we can find that is separate from our own observance of it. There, there's, there's nothing that is separate from our own consciousness in that equation. That is uh, uh, brings to mind my, my mind Schrodinger's cat. If you're not uh, familiar, it's a question of a closed system where you can't see in and you can't see what's happening in there. And in that closed system, whether it be a box or something like that, you put a cap with a vial of poison. And you, you hook a me mechanism up to that, that there's a 50% chance that that uh, vial be broken and release the poison into the box. And there's a 50% chance that that vial does not uh, get broken and release poison into the box. So before you open that box and check that that what what has happened has happened there's a 50 percent chance that that cat is dead 50 percent chance that the cat is alive now this is not a real experiment this is a thought experiment okay so what 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 does that look like as far as quantum mechanics is concerned and it is a probability there's a there's a probability chance in that now that's a very uh, simple probability chance. In life here, we have a much more complex system with a whole lot more variables, variables um, in action. So that you know the 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 prediction or or even saying what is is so problematic that when it comes down to it, um, there's only probabilities. There's only probability scales until something has actually happened. And it and, and it's not that something has happened. It's when it is observed and when it is seen by the consciousness. So there is no true and findable universe separate from consciousness. That's why the Buddha did not it's a question answer the question of eternal or not eternal and finite and not uh, finite. Um, is it both, perhaps? Does that does that answer? You know, it, maybe he didn't answer it because it's both. Um, in there, in in the Hindu uh, cosmology, there's Brahma. Brahma is the creator god. So, uh, did Brahma, uh, Brahma, and Brahma's heaven, is that maybe of eternal quality, kind of like our Western, you know, how we would look at the eternal world, heaven, um, God. And, and that realm, that kind of thing is eternal, but creation is finite and in time. So therefore, uh, it would be both eternal and not eternal. This whole thing that that's going on, co you know, theologically speaking, cosmo cos cosmologically speaking, um, does it work to that it is both? I don't, you know, um, in in Buddhism. Uh, even the gods are not not of eternal quality. The only thing that is eternal is consciousness itself, is the is mind itself, and not just not individual minds. Although all individual minds are part of infinite mind, the mind is one. So it is uh, fractured in the in in the conditioned. But in the uh, in the infinite, in the absolute, it is one. Number two, after death, does the Buddha continue to exist, or does the Buddha not continue to exist? So, um, as far as this question is concerned, the Buddha did not answer that either. Does the Buddha continue to exist or does the Buddha not continue to exist? So, the Buddha is a being that is outside of conditioned existence. That's what the Buddha is. Is energy, enlightenment energy, Bodhi is what it's called. Enlightenment energy that has been embodied into a being. Now, uh, 
we we might look at that as pure a purely spiritual birth in our western way of thinking so does that being you know continue to exist after death or not continue to exist after death um we can think about it like how we look at jesus a spiritual being purely spiritual being and others like even all of us you know as as far as western thinking christianity is concerned you know we all uh, are going to live eternally it's just you know in in what capacity are we going to live where are we going to be in that kind of thing but um there's not a question of whether you continue to exist or whether you just get snuffed out into nothingness right so uh but the buddha did not answer that why is because in buddhism there's no true or findable i or self you remember that um everything in buddhism has the three marks and that's everything there is no selfhood that is of a being that is independent of other things so everything exists in relation to everything else and there's no separating that kind of thing any any answer uh that that is given on these kind of questions and that kind of question there specifically of existence or non-existence after death um any question is going to any answer is going to be misunderstood by somebody who is strictly in a metaphysical uh kind of spot with it and not a spiritual uh place that is the that is the uh the danger of having this kind of discussion or this kind of thing with you know just an open uh group of people on youtube for example because you know if 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 somebody comes in that already you know is totally cut off from spirituality they're totally materialistic and they think after they die they just go into the dust and there's nothing well they're already a nihilist all right they already have an answer to that question that i just asked there they're nihilist and they're materialistic uh atheist nihilist and so there's no there's no you know discussion with that person uh you can only kind of put out there that hey you know uh there's there's more to it than that and show uh kind of examples and when something resonates they themselves will change from the inside out everybody changes and grows so um the buddha knew that uh this this disciple was just in this kind of metaphysical speculative spot and knew that um he didn't want to push him to a like an eternalism of everything is eternal everybody is eternal um and they are always going to be around and definitely not push him to a nihilism either so it was more skillful at that point to not answer the question right number 3 and the final question are are the body and the self separate entities so um the the energy that is um animating your body some might call spirit some call uh you know just vital energy that uh leaves the body when you die what they called it in their culture is selfhood they call it the self atman and the atman um there is a a small atman that is that is you know you the little spark that is in you that is animating your body and then there is the higher self like a grand self which is like a spiritual god an atman all right now that there were there were a lot of people in that frame of mind that is the teaching of hinduism and that is the kind of culture that this that buddhism grew out of so that question is is the spark that is in you um animating your body your body and your body your embodiment um are they the same or are they separate completely separate entities and that is uh basically unanswerable because in buddhism there is no uh there is no part of the self that is unchangeable 
that is not to say that there's no spiritual, you know, spark and that there is there's something there, but it's all it's allowed to be changed and augmented and grown, and it does. And so that being, um, the energy within that being is going to change and grow and expand and traverse, you know, the whole of creation, eternity, beginningless time, endless time. And uh, not to say those things in a definitive way, but be beginningless and endless in a way that it is too long for our minds to even wrap our heads around. And so the question is moot, right? So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. This is uh, uh, how the Buddha uh, confronted metaphysical speculation. I appreciate it, book two. Y'all let me know what you think. Bye-bye.